Hello, I'm Christopher Mose. And I'm Sabine Schoenberg for Smart, Healthy, and Green News. First up today, we have information about an article that we recently posted on our site. It's about focusing less on the apps around smart home automation and more on the APIs. API, it is the central issue that everybody has to really grapple with if you want to get into anything tech. An API, that is application program interface, and it's really about how devices connect with other platforms. So when we're looking at Apple's HomeKit, when we're looking at Google Weave, Amazon has Echo with Alexa, that is an API protocol in how the devices are actually speaking to other applications. And it's either one or the other, or there are some very smart manufacturers that are really trying to get ahead of the game and be on all platforms and be on their own app as well. One of those manufacturers that we've talked about is Philips with their Hue lighting system. Very cool. They decided, let's be on Apple HomeKit. Let's be with Google and let's be with uh, Amazon Alexa. They even have their own dedicated app if you don't want to work with one of them. Exactly. So it's really universal. And that's kind of the answer I think we all need to get to. Universal use. So because we don't want to be in one or the other, or maybe we can buy this next thing, or maybe we can't. Way too confusing. So the next article that we're looking at today is some interesting information coming out of Colombia. They have a couple mm -hmm. um, key issues that they're trying to achieve with this particular product innovation. One is Colombia has a large amount of plastic that is going into their landfills that they need to figure out something to do with. They also have an issue with affordable housing. This company, Colombia, um, it's a plastics company out of Colombia, have found a way to recycle that plastic into Lego-like building blocks. I think it's a really clever idea. Now, whether it works in the U.S. with our U.S. building standards remains to be seen. But the idea of taking a problem and making it a win-win, perfect. Kudos to them. I applaud them. So the final article that we're bringing to our audience today is around a new technology that is taking solar panels and marrying those with an older alternative energy source that hasn't really caught on yet, but the idea of fuel cell. So it's taking the solar energy and using that to create hydrogen for fuel cell technology. Yeah, you need a startup load basically. And uh, actually I've done quite a bit of uh, research. In fact, I've met with the people from Bloom Energy who are really first and foremost in the whole fuel cell technology arena. They were able to bring fuel cell um, technology costs down to a point that it's now really a good choice for the commercial arena. I have talked to them many times trying to kind of pull them into the residential world because I think it will be a slam dunk there. But right now the cost to benefit ratio is not quite there for the residential world. But you go into large distribution areas, you look at FedEx distribution centers, Google, um, eBay, you know, big office building distribution facilities, they can be run and they are run on Bloom Energy fuel cell technology. It is a great way to go. So they do need startup loads and that's what that solar component adds to it basically. Uh, watch Bloom Energy. I think there's more to come here. I'm hoping anyway. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our recent project, The Greenwich House. You can find more information on what we talked about today at sabinesnewhouse.com.